With fast charging being all the rage and more and more devices from every manufacturer including it in their marketing info and even just on their spec sheet, I wanted to find out whether this standard, which is controversial, as we've seen from Apple coming out and saying that their battery life and battery health directly correlates with the performance of the phone, which can directly affect it. There is a setting now that you can change in iOS, but it's still something to consider in pretty much every phone across the market. So hey guys, my name is Ryan Thompson of Failtech, and this is my scientific analysis of how battery life is affected by fast charging standards. Now before I get into this, I do want to say that I have read up, and I know a lot of people have that counter argument that all the transforming and all the main stuff that goes on in the charger is in the charger and not the battery nowadays, which is true. A lot of it has been moved to those large charging bricks, which means that that does a lot of the power transformation and stuff like that, and then sends the power to the battery, which puts more of the heat in the charger than it does the battery. That is true. But there are many, many other reasons why this is still a problem. There are also different ways of doing this. OnePlus is probably the best with their dash charge. Number one, it's the fastest, but number two, it actually does it the most efficiently and puts more of the strain on the charger, as in the most amount of strain it can on the charger instead of the battery. And that's still good. But charging, as with pretty much any battery, causes heat. And if you guys don't know, heat destroys batteries. Heat is the reason the batteries tend to die. And it's really difficult to get away from that. A phone, a typical modern smartphone, anything from like the Galaxy S2 and up, has to cram in a high resolution display, a system on a chip, memory, fast storage, and of course that battery in there, all in this tiny little package. And it has to work all fairly seamlessly without any kind of fans or any kind of external heat sinks. And that means there's always going to be heat inside a phone. It's just unavoidable. First, we need to understand how these lithium ion batteries work in our phones. And for that, and I'm going to read this off my phone now, I've got a quote from Venkat Srinivasan. Not sure if I got his name right there, but he is the director of Argonne Collaborative Center for Energy Storage Science or ACCESS. What he says is, in general, if you swing the battery charge from top to bottom, that's the worst thing you can do for a battery, or the life of a battery. If you can cycle the battery between 45% and 55%, that's the best thing you can do. But in general, just make sure you don't keep it fully charged. This is a bit weird and a bit controversial because every time we check our phone or check to see how it's doing, we always see that it's not 100% and we want to fill it to 100%. But this is actually counterintuitive. Frankly, the higher you are in charge state, as you creep to 90%, 95%, and 100% charge, the more degradation you will see, he said. Now, this is due to just how fundamentally lithium-ion batteries work. And I've made a little animation for you. It's not amazing, but hopefully it kind of describes how they work. Inside your mobile device's battery, there is a positive and a negative electrode, and ions that are stored on and transferred to and from them. Along with these is an electrolyte that acts as a transport medium between the two electrodes, and as the ions move back and forth along the electrolyte, it degrades over time. The higher the state of charge, the faster the electrolyte degrades. From this, we can deduce that it's really bad to actually keep your phone at 100%, but it's also quite bad to let it drop below like 20%. And this is because, of course, it's more difficult to actually charge when it gets to those high percentages. And the fast charging does have its impact on this. You might not understand this, but most of the time when you charge your phone overnight, it actually keeps the phone at 100% or it keeps it in a higher state. And you'll notice that it might take a fair amount of time to get to 60, 70%, but then it gets a lot harder once you pass that. And it takes longer per percent, let's say, when you charge it past 70%. And that is, of course, due to the electrolyte degrading. How fast charging technologies work with this is that it's swinging, it's swinging that pendulum very fast from a low percentage to a high percentage, putting a lot of strain on that battery and therefore degrading it much faster. If you can trickle charge it between 45 and 55%, which is what Srinivasan is saying, it's going to make your life a lot easier and especially the battery's life a lot easier. Okay, so it's kind of like a combination of the two. It's not necessarily fast charging being the main culprit, but it definitely does play its way into things. But it can also have its benefits. So when you're in the middle of the day and your phone is at like 35, 40%, if you want to fast charge it up to like 60% or 55%, that's going to help. But it is a little inconvenient to have to almost charge your phone all the time in very small amounts. But unfortunately, that's just how it works. Even though you are commonly and falsely told the opposite, 
you kind of do need to charge it in small bursts throughout the day between 40 and 60 percent this will keep the battery in your phone kind of better for longer although when you first buy a phone i recommend if you're buying used to replace the battery or get someone to replace it if you don't think you can service it yourself it can make the world of difference to performance and of course can make your phone last so much longer as well according to professor daniel steingar of princeton university batteries and battery management systems are vastly improving even though you might see a degradation in the actual number the milliamp hours on your battery the battery systems the management systems and of course the operating systems that go along and power your phone are all getting much better and better interlinked to produce better results and give you longer lasting battery life especially with modern android operating systems doze is really good at keeping your phone with a decent standby time and of course ios has been doing this for a number of years now the reduction of back ground processes and background applications that drain your battery really fast does make of course the pendulum move more slowly and allows for that slower pendulum which of course translates to better battery life. It's a bit more complicated with wireless charging as there actually have to be contacts in the back of the phone which can generate more heat as of course the energy that is transferred from the wireless pad to the phone does need to go somewhere and of course when you power something there's pretty much not 100% efficiency in any technology right now especially in consumer electronics there is going to be some heat so when you feel your device being a bit slow replace that battery might make the world a difference of course that's a lot easier to say for people with like lg g4s and galaxy s5s who can replace their battery a lot more easily and for a lot less money but if you're savvy or you feel like your phone's just been a little bit too slow and a bit hot and not running very well then i would recommend replacing that battery because it can make the world a difference i'll link all my sources in the description it was kind of difficult to piece this together because at the moment i'm kind of having a hard time getting my words out Anyway, again, my name's been Ryan Thomas with Failtech. Please do like, dislike, share this video with your friends, comment, subscribe, anything like that can help me out and maybe inform some people on just why battery lives are getting worse over time. Please do check out my social medias on Instagram, Twitter, anything like that. And I do have Discord, so I'll put that in the description as well. I want to thank Ross Baldwin and Jay Brown for following me on Patreon and supporting me. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.